A little while ago, Creality sent me out one of their newest resin 3D printers, the Halo 1 Plus, or Halot. Either way, it sounds pretty cool. So let's get it unboxed, set it up, and start printing. With the printer now set up and leveled, it is time to start on the first test print. On the USB stick that is supplied with the printer, there are a couple of test files. None of those really interest me, so I'm not going to be printing any of those. However, it is already pretty cool to see what is capable with this machine. Other than uh, regular printers, you can actually set up what you want the settings to be specifically on the printer, or use the ones that you set up in the slicer. I simply decided to go for the ones that I set up myself in the slicer, as that is what I'm used to, but you could simply just change it on the printer if you'd like to. The resin that I will be using for this build is going to be from Creality as well. It is their water washable grey. They have multiple different colors and varieties of this resin. If you're interested to find out more, there will be links in the description down below, so you can also check out all of the specifications on the Halo 1. So instead of using the test file to test the printer, I decided to go all out and actually just test the body that I will be printing to see if it would work perfectly. Now the test file I printed at 0.05 and the eventual file that I will be using for the build was printed at 0.01. So the layer lines are five times thinner, therefore creating more detail and a smoother finish on all of the parts. The final batch of parts fresh out of the printer was also cleaned up and then moved onto the bench to remove all of the supports. I am removing the supports before I do the final cure on the parts, therefore the part still is a bit flexible and doesn't tend to break as easily as if it were to be cured already. So that is just personal preference and makes it a lot easier on me. I should have also worn gloves, but I kind of forgot. I quickly turned on the camera and started removing them out of enthusiasm. But be careful, this stuff isn't really all that great for your skin, so wear gloves and don't be an idiot like me. With all of the supports now removed from the body and all of the other pieces, it was time to look over them, see if they were printed correctly, maybe if some needed a reprint or not. In this case, all of them turned out fine. I did reprint the engine piece as I did not add enough supports and a couple of the fenders didn't come out as they should. Now that of course is my own fault and has pretty much nothing to do with the printer. As you can see, it is turning out exceptional parts and just uh, simply off of the printer, no sanding or adjustment has been done whatsoever at this point outside of removing the supports. All of the tires have incredible detail on them, even the small center cap on the wheel has some lettering in there which is really faint, but that is more so in the design and it is still incredible that the printer was able to pick this all up. Looking at the engine as well with all of those cooling fins around the cylinder heads, it is incredible to see that all of the detail has been printed out and captured from the file. The file that I printed is from Oliver. He has a page on Cult3D which will be linked down below and also has multiple different options for you to build this kit. There is a body with and without rivets. I decided to go without and there are also a lot of optional parts for the wheels and also the exhaust. I simply just decided which ones I wanted and those were of course printed. Once all the prints have been completed, the supports have been removed, they have been checked over and cured, it was time to sand some of them. Now the fitment is pretty good straight out of the printer, but sometimes it needs a little bit of adjustment and refinement with a bit of sanding. The small rounded over section on the bottom side of the front fenders was a bit rough as that was where I added the supports. And therefore I still needed to sand it and smooth it out just a little bit. 
or some of the hoops, the rollover hoops behind the driver and passenger, and also the mirrors, I decided to drill a small hole in the body and also in the part and insert a small metal pin just to make them mount up a lot sturdier and not just rely on a glue bond. Now that every single part has been sanded and prepped, it is ready for primer. In this case, I'm using some liquid primer from Tamiya. You could also simply just use their spray can. This stuff works really well on resin, and therefore I decided to use it. Plus, I will be using the rest of their paint range from the LP series as well on every single part, apart from a couple. So I will be using a lot of LP paints and other paints that go really well with this primer. So I just decided to keep it a little bit of a simple build and not take weeks to, or months even to build. So I went for a finish pretty much straight off of the printer after a little bit of sanding, priming, and then going straight into paint. Now I could refine the bodywork even more. There are still a couple of lines here and there, but I simply decided not to go overboard and just have a fun little build and also just see what is capable to come out of the printer and be built up with minimal effort in prep work. The tires were printed in the same resin as the rest of all of the parts for the kit, therefore they were primed and then painted in a rubber black from Tamiya to simulate a rubber look. So as far as spec goes, you can pretty much do anything you'd want to on one of these Morgans. Now normally a lot of the exterior parts are either painted in a flat black or left in the chrome finish. Now I decided to go for a flat black body and all of the parts that would normally be a silver, chrome or other metal finish I painted in a gloss black. Now I did this with Tamiya LP1. This is a gloss black paint. It didn't really dry up the way that I wanted it to so afterwards I did apply a coat of 2K gloss clear. As far as the interior goes, I decided just to keep it simple and went for pretty much one color on the main interior, added some silver bits here and there later on, and also decided to do those rollover hoops in the same saddle tan leather. For the steering wheel and exhaust and a couple of other bits all around, I painted them in a titanium silver and added details with a brush further on in the video. With this being a classic Morgan, or at least built in the modern day, but following the classic design it was originally designed to, I of course had to incorporate a little bit of wood. Now normally there would be a lot more wood on one of these Morgans, but I thought the steering wheel would be more than enough. So all of the wood was painted in a variety of shades and brushes and dry brushes of uh, brown and black and finally coated with a clear orange to finish it off. There is a video on my channel going a bit more in depth on how to achieve this effect and depending on what colors you are adding, you can go for entirely different looks or types of wood. With this being a 3D printed kit, it does not come with decals. So for the gauge cluster, I just decided to uh, look in my parts box with some spare and leftover parts from previous builds, found a gauge cluster and some gauges, and simply just cut out the gauges that I needed and added those decals onto the dashboard of the Morgan kit. Now that all of the detailing has been done, it was left to cure for a bit where needed, I could simply just start gluing it all together.
for the exhaust pieces, I could have gone absolutely crazy and decided to weather them and heat stain them all the way, but I personally am not really a big fan of that look, so I decided just to leave them silver and clean. One of the cool things about this 3D kit that is designed by Oliver is that he also has the clear parts in there. You can either just decide to print them in a solid resin or go for a clear resin like I did here. Now after curing they turned out a little bit yellow but I decided just to leave them overnight and somehow magically they turned pretty clear again. Now the inside detail was the most important for me as I wouldn't be sanding that at all and the outside domed pieces I added the supports to and decided to sand that and round it off as it should be also originally already in the design but depending on how you orient it in the slicing you can simply decide where you want all of the supports to be i figured this would be the best way to support it as i simply needed to sand and polish it anyway so the sanding and polishing went from a 400 grit all the way up to a 3000 grit sanding sponge and when that was completed I could move on to the polishing and that was done with various different compounds from Dispay, also their rotary tool and uh, polishing sponges. For all of that I will be leaving the links in the description down below. Basically I just took it from a 4000 grit to a 6000 grit and finalized it with a 10,000 grit polishing compound until I achieved a nice glossy finish. Now with these being UV curing parts, I decided uh, just to add a little bit of protective clear so that they don't keep curing once they are exposed to uh, UV light. Now the two front ones were done and I had a couple more to do for all of the indicators. Once that was completed, I could move them onto the body itself and simply just glue them in place. I did not only print all of the lenses for the indicators and also the main lights, the small windshields were also printed, polished and clear coated to protect them and could then be installed. And to finish it all off, the indicators and brake lights were painted with a combination of clear red and clear oranges. And with that now done, this build is completed. If you are interested in purchasing the Creality Halo 1, their resins, or any of their other products, I will be leaving links down in the description below. It is a super nice printer, creating great quality parts, and it's really easy to work with, with a lot of incredible features. Again, more on that will be in the description down below if you follow their links. All of the other products used are probably available in my web shop, thescalemodelingchannel.com, and if not, they will be linked in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.